So, uh, Dee Dee, I, I want to start by just, um, if you can think back to when you were making this piece, if, if you knew when you started that you were going to be exploring the kind of the range of what happiness might be, or if you really discovered that in the making of it. No, I, I suppose I, I knew that it was rich, and I wanted to research it together with others. Had researched it already on my own, but wanted to share it and, and really go into a studio together with a composer and dancers. Oh, and there he is on his cue. <laughs> Alexander Balanescu. So you, you already had been thinking about the idea and then you knew you wanted to bring dancers into the... And so right away you were bringing music. I mean, because you always talk about how much you love working with music, but this was now to have Alexander in the studio from the beginning? Yes, because I've worked very often with his music for other choreographies. And we got in contact and Alex had mentioned several years back, oh, if we could ever work together, that would be fun. So this was the perfect opportunity. We both live in London. And I thought, let's see if he's interested. So the discussion started and Alex was like, yeah, I'd love to perform, which I wasn't aware of that he would <laughs> be willing to perform. Exhibitionist. So well, you know, I've been thinking a lot about that. It's one thing to collaborate with a musician and then you give him a nice chair in the corner because you actually have quite a bit of choreography. So maybe you could t talk about when you realized it wasn't going to be the kind of collaboration where he got to sit still. Oh, it was never planned. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. always planned to be interactive. Mm -hmm. He wants to be on stage and he wants to be part of the action. <laughs> so uh, for me, it's much nicer to have a musician integrated mm -hmm. Than, than having him sit on the side, mm -hmm. if, if that's possible. And with the violin, it is possible. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so when you, 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 it sounds like you were game to start with. When did you realize it was gonna be exactly as complicated as it becomes? <laughs> well, we, we had a, a wonderful luxury, I would say, to, to develop the, the piece together. Because normally with dance, more often than not, the music exists already, and then it's choreographed. But, uh, I mean, we used some existing ideas, but a lot of it we developed as we went along, uh, according to the dramatic situation we needed. So the music was always going to be part of this uh, search for what, what it means, what happiness means. And, how do we feel about it? And each uh, dancer and and myself um, expressing their own experience and personality uh, through what we're doing. So, Didi, could you say something about the sort of the arc of the whole piece? That the, we we see, see different ideas get introduced, but then it's also we have, you're figuring out the through line. Could you just talk about how you started to build it? Like, you here's here's an interesting solo, and here's a beautiful trio that, and and both orally but also visually. Yeah, that's a very organic process. Actually, I start working with several ideas, then we start to develop them, and see if they're interesting, if I can develop them further, if they stick. Uh, if we all f still after a week feel, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's worth exploring further. So it's, it's a gradual process. And then together with the music, you kind of find links or you find moments that you think, oh, that, that would be interesting dramatically, you know, to go from a high to a low or from something lighter or more intricate to something simpler. Um, so together we found actually a way of tying those scenes together and of course, you try different things. Of course, you, you uh, chop and paste. And, but in the end, this is, this is the end result. Could you say something about playing? Uh, so there's rec a recorded score and you're playing live, and, which seems um, extra complicated to me. Could you just talk about how you realized that, that it wouldn't be a solo violin, that we'd hear some recorded mu music and that you would pl uh, play with it and against it? Yes, I, I, sometimes I felt that... Uh Somehow, the, I wanted to more richness that that, that the solo violin could give, um, and actually having those uh, more rich texture 
textures, when, when the solo violin um, does play as, as, a, as a single instrument with, uh, more often than not, with a dancer, with a solo dancer, and then it, it becomes something more special, actually, because it, it's something much more, in, more intimate. So the, so the dynamic range is, is, is expanded in that way. But I wanted the, uh, I'm, I'm wary of, uh, you know, backing tapes, backing music. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay. nowadays it's on computer. Uh -huh. But, but uh, I, I try to make it very organic. So, uh, I, I think except one little bit, it, it's all played by me and uh, I, built, I built the tracks um, myself. It's a kind of, let's say, like a, you know, like a craft thing rather than industrial, an industrial thing. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. you know, I, I did it and there are actually some uh, imperfections in those backing tracks, which I qu quite like, you know. So, uh, with your your um, experience of listening to music, you have a particular kind of response to it as a dancer and choreographer. So, were you uh, able to feel like I can weigh in here and, and say something about the dynamics of the music or those kinds of comments in the conversation? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that was completely mm -hmm. discussable. This works. That doesn't work. Uh, you know, this, I, I love this existing piece of music of yours. Can we do something with that? Or can we do something similar? Or I love the atmosphere or no. Alex is very flexible in that, in that response. He, he really relates also to the dancers and to the work and tasks that I gave the dancers. I also gave Alex. Can you give an example? Um, well, are you happy? You know, that was a, a big task as in, gosh, how do you answer that? And yeah, we had discussions about how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you express that? Yeah. One of the things I um, really appreciate is how uh, kind of stripped down everything is. So not just how you've stripped the theater bare, but also that this is really something that you could you know, pack in the back of your van and drive to the next destination with the boxes and the plastic. Could you talk a little bit about working with the designers to get to something that was kind of spare and, and rich at the same time? You know, when you start a company, funds are small, <laughs> can I say? And the aim was um, to do something minimal, because I've done a lot of works with big sets or big symphony orchestra, or, and I wanted to do something really simple and get back to basics and, and figure out what movement could express and can movement express it all and can I get rid of the excess? That, so that was the starting point. Um, and of course then budget and like you say traveling yes we traveled in England Alex drove in his car I drove in mine dancers in the back boxes in the back <laughs> That's how we, we went from one place to the next. I mean, there's something about um, kind of austerity that makes you realize like what, what this sheet of plastic can do and, and that, that the time in the, in the studio to explore it is also seems like something that, that, that having the company allows you to do is like to really dig into an idea. So I, I want to ask now just about, um, about the, the interaction between the dancers, because and uh, with you, Alex, because it feels conversational in a certain way. I mean, not just when you've got a dancer in between you and and the violin, but also just the the way people watch each other, or the way they interact. And could you talk a little bit about how um, how that emerged? You know, Alex likes to to communicate through his music, but also through his being, and also being on stage with them so very often I would just say oh can you sit over there or can you you know one of the dancers wh where can you what space can you fill within within the, the the moment that Alex is playing or what is the it's always a dialogue I mean that for me is really important that whatever the dancers do together with Alex the music and the dance it's a dialogue between those two um, so we worked a lot on that and pointed things out and my dancers are very perceptive to that and, and sensitive, and so is Alex, so that 
works. And, and, and in performing for you, when I think oftentimes musicians are thinking more about the, the sound they're making than their physical embodiment and what it means, but now you're, you're having to be really aware of your body in a very different kind of way because you have to be certain places or make room. Or um, Could you say something about maybe how it has an impact on your playing? I love... Uh the, the interaction between the music and movement, and I've been interested in that. I've, I've worked in the last few years quite a lot in the theater, being on stage, and I, fo I found it very interesting to, I'm not doing very well, but, you know, very interesting to um, find out how I can play while walking smoothly. It's not easy, uh, and... Uh, uh, find my place on on stage and uh, to make it to make it seem natural, which I don't always succeed. Uh, but uh, I find it a lot of fun trying. And um, I, I realize that uh, when when we do concerts and when I do concerts anyway, I'm kind of uh, acting and I'm kind of dancing, moving. Anyway, so I, I, I wanted to actually control that more, find out more how to do it, and uh, it's, it's a learning process for me, which is fun. So, Didi, could you say something about remounting this? You made this piece in 2016. You've gone on and made some other uh, pieces with the, with the dancers. So now coming back and revisiting, what's it like to sort of think, well, that's what I thought then, and three years later, I feel the same, or... Yeah, no. <laughs> you, you want to always evolve, you want to rework things, but again, you, you're constrained by time and money to get back into that process. So what we had to do here is, is figure out who was available from the old cast. My dancers generally are a little bit older, 30 plus, so very often they then either stop or get pregnant or do other things, and then you lose them. So then, then for this production, we had to uh, get somebody else in, uh, and we had one week to get him to the level of what you saw now. So that was, you know, he did a lot of homework. Um, but yeah. Well, it's interesting to think that the homework is not just learn the movement material, but think about the quality of exploring happiness seems like that's, that's the bigger task. And yeah, definitely. And knowing where things come from, sharing that information is difficult in a week, so that was tough. But it didn't, didn't give me time to then rework things, as you can imagine. 